as we talk about uh, deep, dark YouTube uh, <laughs> lessons. Hold on a second. No problem. <laughs> it's not bad sake, man. No, no it's, it's good. good one. Yeah. Today on the first episode of Live Cooking Lab, we're joined by my friend Alex of French Guy Cooking. You probably know him from a successful YouTube cooking channel where he methodically deconstructs every single aspect of home cooking. From a 12 part series on making ramen from scratch to building a DIY automated kitchen trash can. Alex is always pushing the limit in the kitchen and willing to embrace experimentation. So today on Live Cooking Lab, he wanted to go where ramen has never gone before, to Paris. So Alex, welcome to the lab. Thank you, man. Thanks so for much. being here. The first episode of Live Cooking Lab. So I talked to you and uh, we discussed what you wanted to make. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. So I thought if we were to do like a, a French traditional dish, it would be boring. Yeah. Because I feel like this would not represent the, the vibe we, we, we like, yeah. I think. So uh, I mean, we discussed that, but I'd love to do a, a French take on the ramen. French take on a ramen. Why not? So where this idea just came, you said it would be boring to just do French food. Yeah, exactly. And we've done, I mean, you had a whole series on ramen. Exactly. So I did a whole series on ramen. You know your ramen as well. So, yeah. I, so I thought this would be a nice, uh, you know, a nice spin and, and a nice connection between two worlds which are not that different, I think. Because, ah, so. yeah, ramen has a structure. So the tare, the sauce, the, the fat, the broth, then the sides, the noodles. So basically, we, we can shift some of that, some of those flavors. Do you think that this has been done before? I think so, yeah. Like Frenchifying a ramen? Mm, maybe not in the way that we are going to do it. Okay. I but, like but, but, I, but I think shifting the flavors of ramen, I think plenty of people have done that. But French, I've never seen that. Mm, maybe so not. we're using our ramen <laughs> skills. We are your, pioneers. That's what you meant. We're pioneers, exactly. Pioneers. So how French do you want this? How uh, Japanese do you want this? That's the thing. Okay. The line is something to be defined. <laughs> to, uh, so we, we, we could go very French, but, but that, would that be a ramen then? Yeah, like we could just do a French onion soup and like put some ramen noodles in there. But that wouldn't be a ramen. Yeah. Oh, w w w would that be a ramen? I don't think so. I think there is some type of balance. The question is what the balance is, mm. but I guess today is an experiment. Yes. We're in the lab, so we're gonna, we're gonna get going. So what, would, what should we start with? I think we should start with the broth. Okay. With, with the broth. Okay, so, let's get the broth going. So what was your thought on the broth? I did make, because, you know, the original idea you mentioned was the French onion. That mm -hmm. is the most French yes. yeah. soup yeah. there yeah. is. So we like that idea, but it can't be too, it can't just be French onion soup. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's a good start, I think. Because as, as you just mentioned, it's super famous, it's legit, it has flavors to it. Yeah. And also, you know what? It's a good start, you're right. Yeah, it's a good start. It's and good also, start like, 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 like ramen, there are some sort, and I don't want to make enemies, but yeah. there are some sort of, of a drunken food. Because mm. it's, it's very fatty, it's salty, it's strong, it's comforting. So it, it, it soothes the soul a bit like Onion soup. Onion soup has the same purpose. Ah, it's to so heal same the idea. Soap. And you know what's great about ramen that I find is that because it, like, you can push the boundaries where it's other mm. Japanese cuisine. I'm sure you know it's so specific. Yes. It's so traditional. I feel like ramen is the one dish where people mm. are like, let's. Uh. <laughs> There's a bit of creativity involved with ramen. I think so, we can be a bit loose. So we have. I did make yeah. uh, beef and a chicken stock. I thought okay. a beef stock would be mm. a little too. Okay. Aggressive. So there's beef bones in there. Basically, I roasted Amazing. some bones, roasted some chicken, mm -hmm. cooked it down for hours. So we'll start okay. off with yeah. that. Okay, cool. Oh, do we need any water in there? Maybe. I yeah. think we need yeah. a little more. Yeah. Because we're going to flavor just, this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So tell me about what you were thinking on the flavor. So, so as a base, I think we can add, like, we can cut a carrot and add an onion to it. It's not going to do any bad to it. Yeah. So. Uh, and I like the idea of, you know, a lot of people when it comes to stocks, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, when you think of like a traditional just vegetable soup, they cook things down for so long. Mm -hmm. I like adding flavors like this now, when you yes. already have the broth and then you're just additionally adding these light flavors. I, I started cutting. 
Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Cut okay. all you want. All right, so we're just gonna add some veggies. What about this kombu? You had the idea of... Yes, but, but I would keep it like maybe for a, 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 a bit later. Okay. I, I want to infuse the, the broth first with basic flavors, a bit of carrot, a bit of onion, okay. maybe a bit of thyme. We are just adding a bit more layers to the stock. Because well, otherwise, it's already good. I'm, I'm sure it, it must be good. But it's just gonna give... Complexity. Yeah, complexity. Yeah, for sure. Half an onion, good. I think so. Okay. For sure. I think a little thyme would be yeah, really thyme, nice. Yeah, thyme for sure. Right. Thyme, bay. You have like uh, bay leaves? Oh, there it is on the corner right oh, yeah. there. That's great. Alex, did you slip? There you go. That's a good culinary producer right there. <laughs> Sneaky, ninja-like. You can't see it. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to add just a few of these thyme leaves. So right now we're still very traditionally French almost. I think so. We have a broth, we have onions, carrots, thyme. Where does this get Japanese? <laughs> not with the Parmesan rind, not with this one. But, but I with... like this idea. Alex had the idea of adding some Parmesan rind, and what's this going to do? So basically, when, when, when you add a, like, like a cheese rind to a stock, you're boosting the umami. Mm. In what? this case, adding a cheese rind not only boosts the umami, but it also gives that onion soup, you know, cheese gratiné, like, like crusted cheese. Yeah, yes. exactly. So we're adding the... You know, like the Japanese umami, but with the French. Yeah, style. yeah, the uh, w Western like style of adding umami. Yeah. We're basically gonna. I'm, I'm gonna add two bay leaves okay. to it. Okay. Cool. Two bay leaves. When are we gonna add the rind? We can. We can add right now. Okay. I think. Just one piece. Yeah. Oh no no! I would go. I would go all the way with this. What do you think? All of it. Yeah well, yeah this yeah. is like still has a okay, lot yeah, of. Okay yeah yeah. Just, we need just this the rind. Yeah. Just later. the rind. Okay. So just when did you start cooking ramen, and what you know what? What made you want to do a whole series on your channel on just ramen noodles? Because I felt like, like, and it's probably the case for many different types of cuisine, but I felt like in the Western world, we have a different understanding of what Asian cuisine is. Mm. We have a different interpretation, to be honest. Like, like the dish you can, you can taste in the US or in France, like the Chinese dish, for example, they are not the ones that Chinese people like most of the time. Okay. And it's the same thing for Japanese cuisine. Like, especially in France, I think in the US, it depends on the location as well. But like sushi is super popular. Yeah. It's not representative. Yeah. It's not the thing. I mean, I've, I've been to, 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 to Japan, I've seen them. You see way more ramen than you see sushi shops. Yeah. So I thought, let's give back to this food, which maybe, you know, I don't know, just a bit neglected. In, in the Western world, a bit more credit, a so bit you, more value. Okay, so you wanted to bring a traditional side to it and show yes. like the essence of ramen noodles. Exactly, let, let, let's first showcase how beautiful it can be. Yeah. Let's understand what- It is what, beautiful. <laughs> it is very beautiful. I'm and sure it, that's part of like, one of the reasons I make ramen too is, you know, aesthetically it is so nice. It's, it's so it's fun beautiful. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is one of the most beautiful dishes. <laughs> it's why it's so popular on like, you post a picture of yeah, on, Instagram. on Instagram. On Instagram, it's a killer. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's free points on Instagram. This, this is for me just to chop it up or what? Or you know what, why don't we start with the caramelized onions? Oh yeah, okay. To do that. okay. So you put out a series on ramen and what's the reaction to it from your fan base? So this has been the most popular uh, series on my channel. Okay. So it was a 12 episode series. Uh, I went all the way in all the geekiness that I can go to uh, on my channel. So I made a whole episode about tare, so the the, the main seasoning sauce at the base. Yeah. Uh, I made I, I don't know. I, I made a machine to make the noodles. So that's that's how deep I went. I find that interesting. You can do a twelve no. No TV producer would say, oh, a 12-part series on ramen noodles. Oh, you're going to make a machine and you're going you're gonna to make a whole video on oils. Yeah, you're going to make a whole episode on flowers. Yeah. Because that's what I would do, obviously, you know. So how, how has that been, you know, having that ability to, to do something that, you know, to do a 12-part series on just ramen that, that, noodles? That, 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 that's amazing. It's, it's exactly like, I, I, I think like the difference might be the same as between a Hollywood movie and a Netflix series. Mm. With a Netflix series, not only do you know the main plot of the story, but you know the father of the hero, the mother, the, the kids, ah. the friends, you know, everybody's oh, good story. Analogy. Yeah. <laughs> and true. with us, it's the same. Instead of just doing a ramen quick, 
Here's a quick ramen recipe on, on, on can I say Food Network? Is that yeah, a good yeah, idea? yeah, go for it. <laughs> a quick ramen recipe, like oh, we're properly all about Western hating on Food okay. on No, Provo I'm not course. hating on anybody, but, but I feel like th they need to get to the point pretty quick and they need to appeal to a broader audience. I can go in niche mm. content. You, YouTube is by definition about the niche. And you know what's interesting about that is, you know, the idea that once people have seen that Netflix show, mm -hmm. they can't go back. You know, when I you have so. a storyline, it's line, too late. It's too late, and maybe that's the same way with food. It's like, can we go back to Food Network when it's like, it's oh, not. look, then yeah, here you go. Exactly. Here's your ramen noodles. <laughs> done. It's like, no, we want, we want all of the yeah. steps. We want all the layers. And and you you, you want to see real life people doing real life cooking and mm. like like. like People you can actually identify to, I feel. So I, that's I interesting because like, I, yeah. I see you on your channel a lot, which I find really inspiring, messing up. Yeah, I do mess up quite a lot. Thank mistakes. you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the point of this show, you know. Yeah, oh, this you is mean. real cooking. Yes. But I think it's very relatable. Was that something that you had to, you know, work into over time? Like, when, mm. when did that kind of become a part of your channel? By the way, I think we can get the onions. Okay, let's, let's put them in. Do you want to do the clarified yeah. butter? Yeah. Or yeah, oil. Well, we're not, oh, oil, oil, oil is fine. Okay. We, we, we will add some butter afterwards. Okay, perfect. How many onions you got? You got I've this? Got, I've got about, can I, what can is that, two onions? Them? That's great. That's going to be so amazing. So what's the idea? We're just going to slowly cook these yeah, down exactly. into a jam. Yeah, exactly. And that's going to give it the French onion. Yes, feel. but this time, instead of uh, cooking them in white wine, we're going to cook them in sake. Ah, so we are going like to have this. that Japanese, J Jap Japanese feel to it. So this is just going to be like this ultimate sort of Japanese onion jam that will still relate back to the well, French onion. This is going to be amazing. We, sh we, should sell, <laughs> we should sell this stuff. As what? What would you be know, sa it? Sake infused French onion jam. Oh. That, that, would, that would be nice. We're too busy. A few bucks. So I think that the mistake started earlier than this in another okay. series. Okay. I, I made another series in the past called the Dry Aged Beef series. So when you were in your, your series on Dry Aged Beef. Yeah, at some point. You screwed up. Yeah, exactly. I screwed up like big time. Okay. Something wrong was happening. And I thought, well, since I'm a YouTuber and I have to produce one video a week and yeah. this week, I screwed up. Why do I put out? What do I put out? Oh, That's so by necessity. By necessity, it exactly. It's just a consequence of how the platforms, uh, how the platform basically work. That's and interesting. I thought, so you were just adapting to the platform. Yeah, exactly. And I thought, well, this is interesting. Something is wrong. I would watch an episode where something is wrong. Maybe more than an episode where something is right, to be honest. Mm. So you put it out and... What got was their reaction? I never had at that moment a video that attracted that much attention that fast. And the title was like, something is wrong. <laughs> Which has now become kind of your Yeah, thing. exactly. Now exactly. people expect something to go wrong. Exactly. Now, now it's classic. like, if, you, if it's going right, it's like, that's interesting for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah or, or, or yeah. I mean, on my channel, at the moment, if I just make a recipe where everything yeah. goes right, according to plans, people will just go like, are you sick? Yeah. Do you have a problem? Is there something wrong in your life at the moment? And I would just go, no. I mean, I, I managed to, 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 to do it in one shot. I guess what people want to see, it's not about the failure exactly. It's about the journey. It's mm -hmm. never about the end destination. Yeah. I so that's when you think people are connecting to just seeing your full journey. I think so. Which really wasn't, like we said before, it wasn't much of an option for food TV. Oh, you didn't really sure. see too much of the journey. It was all like, I was on Food Network shows mm -hmm. where, oh, that's true, we can just throw the, the end pieces in here, um, where, you know, everything was perfect and mm -hmm. everything came out right. And then you're coming along and you're screwing up. And that probably was very, you know, very unique for people to see. So you had like a very strong reaction to that from the mm -hmm. fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, people started to, to feel better about themselves. Because, mm. so, so yes, I was less of, of, of a, you know, sparkly influencer, yeah. like in, in a world where everything is perfect. <laughs> Why don't we pop these in yeah, here? I was less of that. But then at the same time, I just became normal. I just became like a real person. Mm. And they thought, well, if Alex, 
just messes up from time to time. Maybe it's okay if I mess up as well. And then it, it just lifted some weight of their shoulder, I feel. And then I realized, well, my job is, is not to tell them recipe. My main job on my YouTube channel is always the same. It's just to bring inspiration to the game. Yeah. Inspiration and confidence. And That's the two things I'm working on. Okay, inspiration and confidence. And I guess the confidence, it's almost like ironic in mm -hmm. a way that when you're screwing up, you know, most people would think, oh, I'm going to give someone confidence when this goes well and like, look, I'm doing this so well. But when you're screwing up, people are getting more confidence in the yes. kitchen, you find. Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. But also because I never stop at the failure. That, that's my story. Okay. The failure is just a step. A failure is just one path that is not the right one. So in all the paths you can take, the, I mean, you, you, if, if you fail ten, ten times, you have found ten paths which are not the one you should take. Yeah. So, so, it's just, so, so I'm building up on failure in my episodes. For example, I, I would never just fail and that's the end of the story. No, I would fail, but then I would try to understand, okay, so what went wrong? What can I amend in my process? Do you find that, like, how do you end a series? Because I know with the, you know, you also did a huge series on croissants. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, how many episodes were in the croissant series? Probably 12. 12 episodes on croissants. <laughs> there you go. How I mean, I'm shooting a new episode right now in New York about croissants. So. Okay. So how do you, what is the end of a series? How, like a season finale, I know that's so hard. This is actually interesting. It's like a, a good TV show. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult to end a good TV show. And what I started to realize was that how do you end a TV show when it is about the journey? It's life. There isn't mm -hmm. like an ending to life other than, you know, maybe you die. But mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you end a series? How do you know when it's over and you're ready to move on? I, 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 yeah. So, so the ideally, the best would be to define the finish line straight from the start. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, I, for example, I will end the ramen series as soon as I get to 80% of a Japanese ramen, ah. for example. Oh, so you kind of need some restrictions or boundaries yeah. beforehand going into a series. Yeah, because that's how my content operates. It's not always the case, but, but I feel like, thanks. So we're just blanching these to kind of get to Yeah, I think they're good. For the ramen series, it was like, let me get to let me get to 80% of a ramen master. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, from a Japanese point of view, this is like blasphemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from a because French they point spend, of view... you know, years Yeah, years. 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 But, but, but from an amateur point of view, a home cook point of view, yeah. it's not that far away. Yeah. It's okay. It's not bad. I just wanted to get my broth right, to get my noodles right. I wanted some understanding in all this. And it's tr the truth is, you are probably 80%. That extra 20% is what's going to take you 10 years. Life. Yeah, Life. yeah, yeah, yeah. 10, exactly. 20, yeah. 30 Life years. Lifetimes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now why don't we go in with the eggs? The eggs, yeah, you for sure. You wanted to poach them, right? Take us through a poached egg. Yeah, so the way I would do a poached egg, probably, uh, everybody has a different technique. I'm sure you have a different technique yeah. for this. I don't make, honestly, I make half-boiled eggs all the time. I don't poach too many eggs, so I'm, I'm learning from you right now. So, I just made a few, a few poached eggs for a recipe on okay. my channel, so, so I've, I've been polishing a, okay. a very... This is good. A very yeah, but I'm uh, putting you on the spot here, if you fuck this up. There. No worries, <laughs> I, I can take it, no worries. So the way I do it, I just bring water to a boil, okay. I add vinegar to it. Oh, okay. Like, any type vinegar. of vinegar. We've got vinegar right there, man. Oh, we have rice vinegar, yeah. You, you know my kids are This is, better a, this than is me. rice vinegar? Yeah. Oh, oh even better. Go. Rice even vinegar. <laughs> That's even better, man. So, you, so technically, you would go 15%, but I reckon. 15%. 15%. Okay. So it needs to be quite vinegary. Okay. Because it makes your, your life way easier afterwards. Bring it to a solid boil. Solid boil. Yeah. Okay. What's and solid? Like a rolling boy. Rolling. Okay. Sorry, I, I don't have all the. the yeah, no, <laughs> solid. I, I got you. This is just for solid. the audience. I Do we're me getting, solid. We're getting pretty solid here. So when you're doing something like this on your channel, mm. how much research is going in? How much recipe testing? Because I know if you are screwing up, obviously you want some of that being left yeah. for yeah, exactly. the camera, for mm -hmm. the video, for the journey. So how, mm -hmm. how do you find that balance between the two worlds? So I'd say it's, it's a bit complicated because like at my place, I'm always cooking. I'm cooking yeah. for my son, I'm cooking for my wife. 
all the meals basically at my place, I'm doing them. And that's my research. Mm -hmm. They don't know that. Uh, they are my, you know, my, my experimental subjects. Yeah. My kid basically has eaten many meatballs because I'm working on meatball these days. Meatballs that are like yeah, the perfect, perfect. meatball. <laughs> uh, at the moment, not perfect, but I'm trying to reach out something I will never be able to reach out. But that's fun. It's part of the fun. So, so yeah, my um, okay. Let me concentrate for okay. a second because I'm very bad at doing multiple things at okay. the same time. Do you need uh, any? I might have gone a bit <laughs> heavy on the vinegar, it's all right. but it's going to be cool. So, so what is the vinegar doing? The vinegar helps with the coagulation of the egg. Ah. So the outside will toughen up immediately. Yeah. And that's going to help us not getting strings of white everywhere. Copy that. I mean, it all, it all comes down to one thing, the freshness of the egg. Okay. This method. I think these eggs are pretty fresh. Oh. Well, I can always blame the freshness of the egg if it doesn't yes. work. Yeah. So you see, you've got two, two types of white. Okay. You've got the, the, uh, ru the runny yeah, white, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then in the center, you've got the firm white. Ah, it, it, so this is interesting because you just, usually people swirl it. I feel like I've never had success with that. And, you just and, lightly and, drop it in. Exactly. That, do that's you want to do another? No, uh, yeah, we, we can. I, I can I try? Wanna, yeah, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Go oh, for it. Wanna... I'm going to try to bring it together. But usually I would do that when it's there are, No, 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 that's perfect. There are ways to make it more pretty. Yeah. But I feel like if I'm getting to 80% of a good poached egg with doing nothing, that's the method I want. 80% of a good egg? 80%, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, feel, I feel so. So how many times did you test this to get it? Oh, so many. So many times. Pro so your, pro son, probably your son had like a lot of decent poached eggs. It's not perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Wow. Okay, so that's the technique to kind of wrap it yeah. up in itself. That one's good. But I feel like if, if you really want a perfect poach egg, there's a way to do it. You, yeah. you just place it in a strainer first and you get rid of the runny white. Because then, then you like only get the... Egg, yeah, right? and, and then you're making a, a, a strainer dirty and you have to do the dishes as well. Because yeah. who's cleaning? <laughs> I'm a YouTuber, I'm cleaning. You do the cleaning, you do the filming, the I do producing. everything. Exactly. So, so in my kitchen, I would not, you know, you know dirty a, a strainer. I would accept the strings. So how do we know when this is done? Do Three you... minutes. I forgot to, to, count, to count it. Come on. So now, okay, so this is where we're kind of just, what are we looking for? Now this is the test. We don't have the timer. We don't have the timer. That's even better. Maybe that's yes. for the best. Okay, and how do you want this at? Do you want this? So I can always time from now. Or is now. this going to damage it? Uh, yes, I think it's gonna damage it. Okay, so usually yeah, I use I use a flat one. This. Yeah, that's great. This, this. Yeah, a ladle, okay. a ladle is gonna be cool. No, it's way too early, man. We we need three minutes on the clock. You th you think it's been in? I mean, maybe two. All right. We've been talking for a while. Maybe right? you're right. This is what I'm saying. We need. But it's gonna be easy you, to check. I'm putting you to the test without the timer. No, it's yeah, how do you check? It's gonna be easy, man. Okay. It's too early. Okay, yeah. I can feel right. it. Yeah, you need to use your senses. Yes. That, that's the thing, that, that is one thing, and, I, and I've seen that in your videos as well. I, I, people are terrified in the kitchen. They yeah. need guidance. So that's why they are hanging to recipe as if their life depends on it. Mm. That's not the way you should be cooking. I know it helps at first to understand cooking. Maybe that's the way to, to go when you're learning. Just that, but then you need baseline. to let it go. Baseline. Let it go. Adapt. Just take a look, sniff it, smell it, touch it. I call this intuitive cooking. Yeah, taste you know? it, adjust, yes. adapt. And this is the only way I feel like you're going to take your home cooking to the next level. If you can break out of the recipe, correct? Yes, own it. Own it. This is your recipe. You're reading a recipe in a book. But this is not the recipe you are making. This is the recipe you are making. Like a, an interpretation on it. Yes. A, a slightly, uh, so I think we should be good. Okay, so how do you drain these? So usually you would use a slotted spoon, to okay. be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I gave you the slotted, but it wasn't up to par. No, because this one has edge on it, so okay. it might damage not the yolk. Prop. This is a new kitchen, I still don't have No, no, but this, this is fine. Okay, now where do we put that? On a plate? Yeah, or in cold water. Cold water, that's what we need. Because we need to drain the, the, the vinegary smell off. Ah, got it. And that will stop the cooking. Uh, as well, yeah. I think two will be fine. We'll each get one. Okay. You see? Who, who needs a slotted spoon? Yeah. 
Mm. You can tell it's good. Not saying that the, the cooking is good, not because I waited for three minutes, but just because of this. Yeah. You know it's gonna be runny. Yeah. You, you can see that the white is good. Which is obviously we, harder we, when it comes to half boiled eggs. Yeah, for sure. Because you don't see them. We can always make them a bit more pretty at the end. Let's see where we at at the moment. I just removed my glasses because otherwise I see nothing. I don't think there's any salt in there, but it's good to kind of get that baseline flavor. Let me taste. Yeah, we need, we, maybe we need, we need to push it a bit further to concentrate the flavors. We need to reduce the, the amount of liquid. It's tasting like a nice, really nice veggie soup. <laughs> I like it already, so. Yeah, it's fresh. It's like I said, you know, just all like a classic veggie soup, but I can taste the umami parmesan in there. You can taste it's it? Subtle. Oh, I wow. Can taste okay. It. It's a little salty, but it just adds like a parmesan essence to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we're going to reduce taste the bay. it. Mm, onions, carrots, bay. I can taste the meat, but, it, but, it, but it's delicate. This is why you add these ingredients after, because if you cook them for too long, mm -hmm. you, it all becomes yeah. one. Right now, the flavors are delicate. Mm -hmm. So we like we want to reduce, but I feel like we don't want to okay, go cool. too long. That's great. So do we want to add the kombu? Yes, the, the only thing with the kombu, you, you shouldn't boil kombu. Okay, why not? Because it's, it's adding like, like, like unwanted flavors to the broth. Ah, it's, it becomes it. slightly acrid. Ah, okay, so should we wait? N I mean, I, I would, it depends on how much liquid we need at the end. I would just reduce it a bit, okay. then cut, cut off the heat, add the kombu, but just maybe two minutes before we want to strain everything. Okay, oh, two minutes the, before. The, the, the kombu everything. is going to stay in there, not so for not We for need so to add the tare, right? Or make the tare, right? Yes, we need to make the tare on the side. Okay, so why don't you start on that? That's good. Here, I'm going to you a bowl. Yeah, that's great. So, back to the question, when you're, when you are coming up with a, with a video and you're mm -hmm. recipe testing this, how do you know that line of what, to, what journey you want to put in there versus mm -hmm. what needs to be recipe tested? Because I struggle with that a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, it's awesome to, you know, to mess up on camera, but then sometimes it's too much. You yes, know, you want right. to have your shit together a little bit, right? So, so I, I think I've got a good example of that. Okay. I watch a lot of YouTube. I'm a big fan of YouTube in the first place, which I don't think is a bad sign. Yeah. If I'm no, I think it's good. <laughs> I've got plenty of friends on YouTube, it, not, not, not only in the food world, but also in the making world. Yeah. I've got plenty of makers in there. One of them, uh, Jimmy DiResta, a maker, he does woodworking, he does metalworking. It, okay. it, he's doing plenty of different things. One time, he was telling, um, I think it was on a podcast, he said, when I'm doing a table for YouTube and I'm working on the legs of the table, yeah. I will do first three legs and I will shoot the last one. And I, th and I thought, well, so it still is cinema somehow. It still is footage made to be watchable. It is entertainment. The failure needs to be rounded. I okay, so it can't be just documenting since when I'm making ramen, I would be cooking for three days. Yeah. So, so I can't record three days of failures. It's, it's not interesting. It, that's, like you, that's just documenting. Exactly. Okay, I see. So it's like somewhere, it's just like this ramen right here. We're finding some type of mix between mm -hmm. Japanese and French. Maybe it's 70% mm -hmm. French, 30% Japanese, or the, the other way around. We'll figure out soon. With a YouTube video, it's the same thing. You're finding, mm -hmm. like, he did 75% of the project, showed the 25%. Exactly. So there's exactly. still a potential. But at the same time, he doesn't, uh, you know, you know uh, emphasize, or he doesn't show his failure. So he's got a different approach. But what, what I just meant was that I don't have to show everything to the audience. Mm. I decided to show most, uh, I mean, all the success, plus some of the failure. Yeah. But selected failures selected because otherwise it's just boring it still yeah. is content i mean it still is movies yeah we are making movies short movies on youtube whatever yeah, we're not vlogging these are our, movies we're not even, vlogging even a, our life yeah but even a vlog is some sort That's of true. a movie as well yeah they, 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 there's something happening especially in, in those videos when you're making a recipe and you just record that recipe maybe 
it's not super close to a movie. Yeah. Even though it's a video and a video could be considered as a movie. But, but I feel like when I'm making like a, the, the, an episode on the ramen series, for yeah. example, uh, and there's a failure, this is so much a movie. Mm. Like, there is a character, he's learning something, he's failing. Oh no, the world is crumbling on his head. What's going to happen? Then, oh, he pulls himself back together, goes back to it, and the hero, I'm, I'm calling myself the hero, You're so the hero. no worries. In your own video. Uh, yeah, and the hero comes back this on like top of it. This is like a comic book of like the ramen master hero. Yeah! <laughs> you know, you do food videos, okay? Mm -hmm. But they have such a cinematic quality, they have such a storyline. Where did you learn that style? You, you, you do that very well, of taking a recipe or taking mm -hmm. something we're cooking, but turning these into a film. Was it always, you know, your startup? Were you always thinking, I want to do cooking videos? Mm -hmm. Or were you a filmmaker at heart? Where did you start? So I started by making all the movies for my friends. Mm. So when I was in high school, basically. You say high school? Yeah, it's yes. high school. And I, I was 18, 17, 18. My dad decided for whatever reason that at our place, we will never have a PC computer. Mm. We will only have Apple computer. And back then, it wasn't cool. It was like terrible. Because I had no games whatsoever yeah. on, 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 on my computer. Which means also, bright side of it, that the only games I had on my, on, on my computer, on my, on, on my family computer, was like uh, Adobe fo fo Photoshop, yeah. uh, iMovie, yeah. and, like, and like creative stuff. The good games that, the, you, the that good are games. useful now. So since Actually, I, video games are useful now. People are... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they're making money on YouTube as well. <laughs> But, but, but what, what I meant is that I had no choice but to learn these because otherwise everything was just... I mean, you, you, you can't play on a Mac. You couldn't play on a Mac. Yeah. And I learned editing. I learned, you know, uh, color correcting. I learned filming. So I was the dedicated guy when it came to making movies for, for my friends or taking pictures at parties. And what age was this when you were learning filmmaking? 17, 18, okay. may, maybe earlier, so maybe 14, 14 as well. Because I also made like skateboard movies, roller, rollerblades, whatever. But you clearly, you know, you had this Apple computer, but you were always, there was some interest in filmmaking. Yes, because I think it's nice. Because I, I, feel, I feel like it's, it's... It's nice if you like it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I feel like it's... it's, it's I, I love light. Yeah. I love pictures. Yeah. I love photography. I've been working in photography agencies. Uh, so I enjoy an image very much. And I feel like a, a movie being just a, a sequence of image, I enjoy movies as well. Uh, with, with the movie, you can be more didactic with the story. I feel like a, a photograph leaves more room for imagination, interpretation, because it's only one shot, and right. then you imagine everything around it. With a movie, you take people along and you tell them a story. It's more didactic. It's more of a teacher approach. I mean, that's what I feel. And since I feel myself like I'm, I'm basically a teacher, well, I'm, I'm basically a, a, a teacher somehow, so this method of expression fits my personality very well. So are you more filmmaker or are you more food cook. educator, cook? Like where uh, did those two intersect? I think boundaries or definitions are not modern no more. Mm. I feel like we blurred the definitions of what it is to be a filmmaker, what it is to be a cook. You I don't call myself a chef. I should. Yeah. I should. Because I'm a chef. I'm a home chef, if yeah. you want. Like I don't call myself a filmmaker. Well, I'm a filmmaker. So you, I think that's what's so cool about YouTube in, in this modern world we live in. Mm -hmm. You have this opportunity to take all of these weird skills and piece them together. Because when you start a channel, like mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm a filmmaker, but then what are my interests? How do, mm -hmm. What films am I going to make? So what was that like for you when you, like, was it always going to be, all right, take this filmmaking quality and just bring in food to that? Mm. Was that your goal from the start? Mm, more, more or less, to be honest. So I, I did a few trials and error, even on YouTube. So I applied the same method to YouTube as well. I posted a few things. Uh, it always had food involved, but some of them were more directed to, to travel, for example. Some of them were more recipe oriented. And, and, and just by making content and adapting to the reaction of the audience, that, that's how I defined my, my, my line, the, the personality of my channel. And I think 
that it's evolving over time. Mm. There's something very interesting with YouTube channels. Yeah. They are, they correspond to a person most of the time. It, it's, it's not that often that you see a YouTube channel that is hosted by several hosts. Yeah. You had Actually, the experience. Those <laughs> tend to not work. Some people, like, some have figured it out, but generally there's something about YouTube. You know, when I started on the Hunger Channel, these productions tried to, like, let, this is TV, right? Mm. You know, let's, yeah, let's exactly. have, like, Food Network. Mm -hmm. But it's just something about it, this connection just mm. doesn't work. Yeah, it's not that often that it works. Some, some, sometimes it does, yeah. but it's less, less frequent. And, and, and when I realized that, I thought, well, the problem is that an individual evolves in his life. Yes. He, he changes. So the YouTube channel is going to change along. Yeah. That there's no other option. Because the guy was like a meat eater and now he's vegan. So <laughs> the channel just turned into the vegan channel. But this is, I think, the hardest part about being a YouTuber because you have full capability to do whatever mm -hmm. you want. You can... You can choose, and you have freedom. No one's telling you anything, anything. But the problem now is your own personal pressure, the pressure from your audience. Mm -hmm. So for you, how do you know how do you successfully go through a change on YouTube? Um, and <laughs> I don't. You don't. Be, I don't. I because struggle this with is, this. This I've, every YouTuber struggles. Some. Some YouTube channels die because they can't change, mm -hmm. but you're so mm -hmm. right. This channel is about you. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you evolve? That's the problem. The audience... I, I think we're ready for the Yeah, combo. I think so. We've reduced. Yeah, I, I think the audience is not always Should ready. Should we go combo now? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So just Let's go for pieces. it. I would, I, would, I would dump it all. Dump it all? Yeah, for sure. Why not? So combo is just going to add that extra layer of, of umami. umami. Okay. Yeah, sure. So really, that's the only Japanese thing, and then we're just going to add this fresh. So you yeah. wouldn't cook the tare like you wouldn't. No, 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 no. The, 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 that is just a concentrated sauce. Okay. But I feel like the the tare sauce has been invented for for practical reason. Because mm. this way you can control the amount of seasoning yes. in the end product. Speaking of seasoning, do we want to salt that or? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, for okay. sure. We want everything to be nicely seasoned. Okay, so we're just gonna season. This is tasting really good. Maybe you get some, some pepper as well. Just a, yeah, a touch. A little bit of pepper. Oh, oh, maybe peppercorns, even better. We, we don't crush them. Oh, I don't think I have that. No, please. Not yet. Oh, but it's like locked in there. Good, good <laughs> luck trying to get it out. Just a touch. Yeah, so, yeah okay, that's so I guess the better question is, how do you navigate a change in your life and relate that to mm -hmm. your YouTube channel? Like, you know, you've been, in how long have you been on YouTube? Six years. Okay, so you've gone through, that's a solid YouTube career. Mm -hmm. You've been through at least one or two probably big shifts. Mm -hmm. What's your recipe for navigating change? Ooh, that's a tough one, man, to be honest. Because I'm not sure I have one very clear in my mind. I, I, I just adapted to whatever came. And also, so in the past, I have worked with uh, Jamie Oliver. Yes. So. You were on Jamie's food tube. Yeah, exactly. This is when he had a lot of, he tried, <laughs> and he failed, like everyone exactly. else. <laughs> he started a, like, 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 like a, a big YouTube network back when the YouTube networks were cool. And I give him a ton of credit because he could have just... It was amazing. He could have just gone on and just done cookbooks mm. and TV, but he was like, you know what? No. I'm getting in on yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. He's a good guy. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> no, I, I really good, think he is. That's good because he's a hero of mine, so I'm yeah. happy to hear that. I mean, he's a, he's a big inspiration of mine. And we, we were chatting about things casually on a couch, and he told me, well, if you want to succeed in all this, your work, I, I can't tell you anything about your work, but I can only tell you, you need a tough skin. Oh, and, this and, is and, like this. So no. direct. This is direct couch chats with Jamie yeah. Oliver yeah, now exactly. being pushed yeah. out yeah. to everyone. Yeah, he <laughs> said you it. need a tough skin. If you don't have the skills to do whatever you you're yeah. doing, well, there's no story. There's nothing to tell you. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, without a tough skin, it's going to be complicated because there is an audience. There are people watching you. They have an opinion. Sometimes it's legitimate. Sometimes it's going to be a bit harsh. Yeah. And you will just have to cope with it. 
to deal with it or just to accept or accept, not accept it. Get used to it, man. That's get used to it. That's a good point. It really is like, I think any creator, mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. look at YouTube as a unique form of creation because you get direct comments. Mm -hmm. But it is just being, having that tough skin, mm -hmm. man. It's so true because you are going to get, if you're doing anything, if you're changing, oh. you're smashed. <laughs> there is some hate around the corner somewhere, <laughs> even on the food channel, which, 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 I don't understand when people are surprised by this. Yeah. It's just like how human works. Yeah. Like human surprised tend to bitch what? about things. Oh, okay. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean we have to take this personally. They are criticizing the, the, the content. They are, maybe they are having a tough time. I don't know. I, I don't want to know, to yeah. be honest. So basically, having a tough skin in any type of creation is probably the most important thing about yeah. continuing success in your career. It's very hard. It's questioning so many things in your life. Believe, try to be the first person to believe in yourself. Sake? Sake for sure. Wanna, as we, uh, <laughs> as we talk about uh, deep, dark YouTube uh, <laughs> lessons. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> It's not bad sake, man. No, no it's not it's good. Bad. Yeah. So these are looking good. We're jammed up right now. Mm -hmm. And now we're just kind of deglazing a bit. Oh, you're right. We should bottle this up. Oh, anything else in here? Or is it just the sake? Mm -hmm. Did you add some seasoning already? Just salt. Salt? But I feel like there's so much flavor going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be, it's gonna I be wanna, enough. Like, I want to know what sake caramelized onions taste like. Oh, wow. I think it's going to be amazing. I, I can see that. It's funny because you cook as well. So you, you, when, when you cook, you, you've got this thing that your mind cooks as well. Yeah. My mind just cooks in advance the things that I'm cooking. Yeah. It, it just tells me, oh, this is going to taste good for sure. <laughs> and you know. You know when you it's know, going to taste it's good. It's weird. But you know what I hate with videos? And maybe this kind of goes into... We should work on this. After yes. All. So with videos, I struggle with like having that in my mind. This video is going to be good mm -hmm. and it's going to look like this. And it doesn't. And 90% of the time uh, it doesn't. But maybe that's when you start incorporating mistakes. And all yeah, that. maybe. But even though I, I, I still put out some content that I believe in sometimes and, and it just doesn't work. Well, yeah. Where are we at? We've got our eggs. We've, we've got, got our carrots. Eggs. Okay. We've got our onions. That that's will be good. done in a few minutes. We need this. Okay. So, so, so we want to strain this? Yes, we need to. Strain it and then get it on a boil because we want this super hot. I feel like okay. ramen, cold, one cold. of the biggest yeah, mistakes yeah, yeah, yeah. is when... It's too cold. It's too cold. And yeah, sure. it needs, you, you undercook the noodles, I feel like, a little bit and oh, then sure. let the broth do yeah. the action. And, and also, one of, one of the misconceptions with ramen, you're supposed to eat the ramen bowl in probably a few minutes, tops. It's an eating experience. It's not like, oh, let's hang out and, you know. <laughs> but, but you, you know what? It's, it, it's, it's very much like Italian pasta. Right? Is it cool? Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow, look at I, that. I would suck that rind, to be honest. You would what? I would suck it. <laughs> I, oh my God. I think it's good. Is oh it? my God. So good. <laughs> That's so, we could chop that up. Oh, we didn't make the croutons. What do you think? You, you, you know that we did a, a good move incorporating this in the broth. Here's our broth. Mm-hmm. We'll get that fire in. Yeah. So we need to concentrate on this. Okay. I might need your input on this. Okay. So I added some tamari soy sauce and some mirin. Okay. Tamari is mostly salty. Yeah. This mirin sweet wine is bringing the sweetness. So we need to find some balance between those two. Now remember, this needs to be overkill. Overkill. It's, it's like a dressing. Yeah. You, you, you couldn't or take a, 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 yeah. Yeah, a spoonful of a dressing would be like, oh, You want much. it to be super strong. Yes. I think it tastes great right now. So you've got a balance between sweetness and saltiness. I think this, the, the balance is perfect. And I think, so maybe, so since the other thing was very French, but this could stay Japanese somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're saying this yeah. isn't French. Yeah, exactly, because the broth, I, would, I feel, is mostly French yeah, inspired. Yeah, this is basically pure this French other than the Congo. Japanese. Japanese. And this is in between. Yes. Because you, you've got the sake. That's what I, I was trying to explain. Sometimes, being a French person, you know, <laughs> doing videos in English, 
Yeah, tell me about that. How you know the difficulty? Because you make made a conscious decision to mm. do all your videos in English right from the start. Yeah. Correct? So, uh, so I basically. Oh wow, that's very good. That's amazing. Are they done? We'll just kind of keep them until they're yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah. Just keep them on low heat. They will yeah. caramelize. Yeah. From the very start, so you decided. Yeah. 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 So from the very beginning, I I thought about this because. In the past, I was an entrepreneur. Yeah. I had a, a digital marketing agency that I that I was um, um, running in Paris for, for like several years, and we made we, we, we started a few internet business, a few startups basically, yeah. and we always try to have them in English because I thought if you can't scale a startup, uh, it's not yeah. really a startup. Hard to scale just within France. Exactly, and I thought also I love traveling. I, yeah. I was very selfish at that moment. I'm, I'm, I'm still still here. Yeah, <laughs> still here in New York right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, I thought if I were to do content in English, maybe it's gonna make me travel. Yeah. Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was part of it. That was, that part, was part of it. it. And also because I wanted to reach out to yeah. the wider audience. Okay. I thought well, the end game in France, if you consider the amount of people connected, uh, and, and then within that. Uh, population, the amount of people which will be interested in my uh, videos, it's going to be narrow. It's going to be very tight. Very narrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and it, and it, because YouTube is all about the niche, Yeah. but it's about the global niche. So what You was can get a niche, you can reach out to a niche in every country on the planet that's, if you that, allow them. That's to. when the niche becomes huge. Yeah, exactly. When it's global. Exactly, because you still need uh, an audience to make a living. So when, what was the hardest part about starting your YouTube channel in English? I'm going to go grab a two ramen bowls. Okay, so here's It's going to be an onion soup somehow. I bought these special for your arrival. Wow. This is from Sun Noodle Company. Okay. Um, and they pretty yeah, much... They are sponsoring the show. You're getting some money from it from Dosh. Maybe next time, but not here. Uh, but I'll give them a shout out because the noodles are great. And ramen okay. noodles, I mean, you make them. Mm -hmm. but they're difficult to make, obviously, you know. So most ramen places in New York don't make their own ramen noodles. These, you know, the nicest ramen shops, the, the most popular, they just buy from Sun Noodles because they're like, you know, they make really good noodles. What's the point of, of spending mm -hmm. so much time making noodles? So Sun Noodle Company, you can get them at a, a few markets around town. So we're gonna boil these. Mm -hmm. we're, re we're ready to come together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's bring this thing together. Yeah, we're we gonna need we, ultimate we got everything so, Yeah, okay, we got everything sorted, I feel. So I think one packet each. Let me check the, let me check and on the... And tell me about when you're cooking ramen noodles. What's like, what are you looking for? It's quick, right? Yeah, it's super quick. Super quick. And you, you mentioned this like a few seconds ago, but we basically have to undercook them. Yes. Because otherwise with the broth, they're gonna cook anyway. And you want the chewiness. That's yeah, like exactly. a, good, a good ramen noodle. And it chewy. helps with the slurp as well. Mm, okay. So why don't you work on, pick your bowl. Can, can, can I get this out of, of, of the pan? Just, just in yeah. a bowl nicely. Let, 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 me, let me take it out. Oh. Here you go. Okay, thank you, man. Take this. So this right here, we're ready to bring our ramen noodles together. We have- got something, man. What? The, the fat. The butter, the clarified butter. We need it now? Yeah, I think so. A little bit of it. That's super French to hit it with some clarified No, for butter. sure, but, but, it, but it's structural when it comes to ramen. It's always like fat. You need fat. the fat. Yeah, yeah. You, you need the oil. It, this, this is like the Just, infused oil. Okay. The only issue is... Do you have a microwave? No. I mean, I do. We, I we, we, we can put it... Uh, um, my... We it's not going to be a big deal, to be honest, because the broth is going to immediately melt it down. Okay, so what if it's a little yeah, glob a, a of... Exactly. A spoon. Exactly. It's going to work. Okay. All right. Got Noodles one. first, I would say. Oh, funny. Yeah, oh, what I, do you do? Oh, so I wouldn't do that. Okay. I, would, I would do tare oh, first. This okay. is number one. Okay. This you is, know what? You're the master. Two. You did 14 videos on this. <laughs> so. All right. Okay, so then I would go, yeah, a big spoonful of that one. Let me get a... Let me get one a big spoon. Yeah. I'm going to get... I'm going Just to use one spoon. Uh, I would go, yeah. A little more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to go with. Can I use Here, this? Here, you can use this. Okay. That's, that's going to be All better. right, so this is the clarified butter. So you don't want to go light on this. I would, <laughs> yeah. I would go at least. That's what's crazy about ramen. It is so much about fat. 
It's about fat and so that's wow. why it's so good. That's crazy. Just the look of that, the clarified butter. Then you've yeah. got fat and salt. Okay, fat, salt. We're gonna put it in. Yep. As soon as we do that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me help you on this side. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel like we're gonna keep this for, for the finishing. This is finishing. This is okay. This is finishing. Oh, look at that finishing. butter melting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, we can probably Noodles now. stir that in. Gently to make sure that it's gonna be melted. Yeah, noodles for sure. Okay. Let me take those noodles. So technically, we we, we would we would need to do a fold of the ah, noodles, but is, it's it's complicated. Exactly. It's complicated. Look at the fat dribbles right there. That is so. Beautiful. I reckon maybe this much. Okay. I love noodles, so okay. I would go like this, uh, and then oh. This what is you why think? you do the noodles after. Yeah. I see, I see. That's beautiful. No, it's true. The fold is so important. Because you, you eat first with your eyes, right? Yes. That's why ramen to me is, you can't beat it. Uh, okay. Okay. Now we go toppings. Toppings. Go for it. Okay. I'm going to go with the dollop of this on the side. Our little carrot fish cakes, really just blanched yeah. carrot. I like the fresh in there because everything has so much flavor, you know? Wow. It's yeah, going to get be a little more of that. Yeah, because okay. you, you know this is going to taste amazing. <laughs> we are, let me get this. Cheese. Cheese. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need this on the side. So this is... it's going to be complicated to get it out. Just do your best. Okay. It has broke. Okay. Did it though? It's not, it's not a big deal. No worries. Let me let me just try to put it upside down. Woo! Yeah, try this to get one, that. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me just try to plate it up. When you wanted the thyme, did you just want like what were you thinking for the thyme? Because green would be nice. Yeah, green is gonna be good. Oh yeah, yeah. Let, let me just chop up some 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 chive. Okay, so we are gonna chive. Here, I'll do it real quick. You focus on. Okay. On what? I don't know. <laughs> on the thyme then. Up, up. I love cooking so much, man. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, an like, it's always a good moment. We've ne this is... This is the first time we've been really cooking together, like in this spontaneous format. Very spontaneous. I love this very much, man. Oh my God. And then cheese. I think it worked, too. <laughs> Whatever we did together. Wow. Like, this is looking very good. That think? is amazing. Maybe a bit more, right? We did it. <laughs> so you were saying about yeah. filming the food reaction, because that is so difficult. Filming, you know, it's a weird thing. Because you've got the, how much space do I've got on my SD card? How much battery <laughs> left? In, in my camera. I is this like going to be a cooked? pretty good job of This it. has been staying on the counter yeah. for three hours. <laughs> It's cold. And then it's like, like, okay, you take a bite and you're like, ah, oh, was that the right reaction? Should I take another bite and try to act like it was normal? What's your, what's your best advice for trying food on camera? Oh man, I mean, for other YouTubers, you mean, or for yeah. just or like creators. if you're on Instagram and you want to do uh, a food show. I would say just if you, because I've seen people pretending to taste their food, they just go like. Wow, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. No, no like that's that. too quick. That's too that's not possible. This is a good point. When you eat a dish, yeah. it's first bite is like yeah, yeah. it's alright. And then it's especially ramen. You know, that's a uh, with ramen, I find that the experience of ramen yeah. is that it changes over time. You have one dish mm -hmm. that creates this experience over 10, 15 minutes, and there's no way from the first bite. Exactly. There's no way. And, and it, for, for sure, you've, you've got this evolution uh, that, 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 that is happening in your mouth and, and with, with the experience as well. Yes. People react too quickly. Yeah, that's some bullshit. Okay. Let, Dude, let me slash that egg. This is insane. Oh man, you know what? The poached egg in the ramen, I think, I, I think it's, uh, it's something because it's going to mix in with the broth. Oh my God. How good is that? I lied. First bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's so different. 
The, let, let me have a bit of the that. The onions book. should just be the sake onions. That should be a, a topping in ramen for, for good. I'm about to die for sure. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> you know what? I would say it's the first fatty, thing is round. I've got a mouthful. Yes. It's a, yeah. a lot. I would say right away the the combination that that sort of balance we are trying to find. I think we did a good job mm -hmm. because my mind is kind of like, is this a traditional French yes. onion soup? Yes. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. I'm getting pulled mm -hmm. in different directions mm -hmm. right now. The onions. I'm really getting the caramelized onions that you would get, but I've got this hint of Japanese flavor. The sake is just shining. The the clarified butter is genius in here, and you're so the fat you need fat, the, you because need. it yeah. coats the noodles and it just woo it takes it there. Mm, I've got an advice for mm. people who want to enjoy ramen. I've seen people in ramen restaurant they take too much noodles when they eat. Mm. Like this hot, is too much. This, yeah, you, you need to pick slightly uh. too little to what the perfect bite would be because because the, they are long and usually they are piping hot. Right now, with your career, with your cooking, how are you changing and how do you want to sort of relate that back to your YouTube channel? Mm. You mean what's the evolution for my YouTube channel? Yeah, right what? now, like where do you find yourself? Is Are you in a change? Are mm -hmm. you, you know, riding? Because I feel like the, the career is very mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a roller coaster. For sure. Where Where do you see things going for you? I feel like I'm in a place right now where I understand where I have value and where I don't have value. Mm. I feel like I'm on the edge, I've always been on the edge of the DIY world and the food world. I've got this engineer side of me that needs to shine in my videos. And whenever I neglect either the food side or the engineering side, then the content doesn't perform as well. Mm. People somehow understand, and, and YouTube, the platform maybe, as if it was a living thing, it kind of understands who you are and where you should be somehow. It's, 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 it's still, you know, something you have to agree or disagree with, but I feel like... So you're just trying to connect a little closer to what your place is, and you feel like yeah. you're doing a good job right now. Mm, not all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, more often than I did before, for sure. Okay. For sure. In the past, I was just trying new format all the time. At the moment, I know that I love making series. I know that I love the journey of, of the main character. I, I love ups and downs, understanding, learning as the audience learns as well. This is my thing. Now, food is the main subject, and I'm always trying to solve a problem. I've got basically, a, you've got an episode right there. Yeah. Solving a problem in food using engineering skills. That's about, that would be about an episode on my channel, I would say. So you can follow him, I'm sure you know, Alex French Guy Cooking. So speaking of series, can you give away your next series to the people? Meatballs. Meatballs. Why meatballs? meatballs? Because meatballs are amazing. <laughs> Meat, so, meatballs are, meatballs are, are exactly the foods that I like. From the outside, it's yeah. just a meatball. Yeah. It's, it's just like, what is it? It's ground meat, that's what it is. Uh, meatballs are apparently simple. There's so much that goes into proportions, ratios, moisture. There are so many techniques. I learned techniques from Italians. I learned techniques from Chinese yeah. chefs, where they incorporate bits of uh, jellified stock inside the meatballs. So you get that extra juice when you bite. It's just insanity. So there you go, Alex French Guy Cooking, the only guy who can make a 16 episode series on meatballs. <laughs> go follow him uh, on his YouTube channel, it'll be linked below, and we're gonna, we're gonna finish this. This was great, thanks for coming on. The first episode Special, of Live Cooking Lab. Always fun to cook with you, always fun to chat YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll cook again soon, I'm That's sure. amazing, man. Thank you so much, man. Yes. That's great.